I don't want to talk anything bad about Ken Hovind, but he is very stubborn on this issue. But if you go back to his um, seventh seminar, he actually says that there is a legit argument from some people that say that the heliocentric model is wrong and the earth is the center of the universe. I haven't looked into it, but I think they're wrong. He said that on seminar seven. But then 20, 30 years later, he still did zero research on the subject and he has changed his mind now and he calls them ridiculous. So you see what I'm trying to avoid? Good afternoon, folks. Ken Hoven here in the slightly hot and muggy dinosaur adventure land. I've been giving tours all morning. We're going to be take session number two about the flat earth. This is one of the dumbest theories ever. Satan is using this just to make Christians look stupid. Yeah. Like the chance that Christians actually look stupid by believing things that they never researched because NASA told them because all the proof that we ever had was a picture from a trip we never made. That's not stupid, right? Doing research on the subject and finding out all the experiments that were ever conducted that never managed to prove curvature, that's stupid. Right. So I'm not here to debate Ken Hovind. I love Ken Hovind. But, you know, old dog can teach him new tricks. <laughs> Yeah, there's only like a uh, thousand five hundred verses that prove uh, another shape than the one that NASA is uh, telling us. The word "bowl" is never in the Bible. The word "bale" is many times in the Bible, though. Yeah, one thing I know for sure concerning tumblers is that when I climb up a mountain, there are only two types of rocks that one can find. Uh -huh round rocks or broken round rocks oh, okay this proves that the earth had been a tumbler oh yeah it was a tumbler the entire earth was a tumbler under the flood right but you know they just they don't want to get it no no they don't they don't that's what annoys me you see how ken hovind just begins by saying it is a dumb theory. You think you work for the Bible, but you're not. Just stop it. So immediately, he's poising his own well about it before getting into it. Uh, it's okay. I mean, I, I accept it for people like Ken Hoven because all dogs, and especially dogs that have completely destroyed evolution, I don't expect them to kill every dragon out there learn new tricks and say, oh, here's another area that I can attack lies. No, he's good at what he is doing. Who cares if a woman went up on a Zeppelin to prove that th what the shape is and when she came down from it, World War I had erupted and nobody cared for the evidence. And then she went up again and world war ii happened when she came down and then at her 80s she took a sled with dogs and went to antarctica and took pictures and nobody found her body we found her uh sled we found a photograph, uh, uh, a camera, and on the camera, a note that says, in this camera is the evidence of the true shape. And whoever found that camera, which were not very easy to get back in the day, they opened it. And the film burned. Who cares? If a woman lost her life trying to prove it like three times and it got silenced, right? There's a full documentary about it. Again, I'm a person that holds people accountable. 
God has been warning us against sun worship, and there was a bunch of sun worshipers that created the heliocentric model. And we now don't think that we are the center of creation. We think that we are going around the sun and that's not what the Bible teaches. And um, going on with a debate with a person that is just stubborn and doesn't want to see that the Bible never speaks of a solar model, uh, I'm not interested. I have personally, from my backyard, proven that they're lying about the solar model. All it needed was to give us and buy a telescope. And instead of making pictures of planets and saying, oh, this is the picture that I took because my name is this, which is every single astrophotographer out there, I used it to focus on the moon and then turn to an object 800,000 times away from the moon to see that I don't have to refocus the telescope. Why hasn't a single astronomer on the earth tried that? 